In this video, I'm fishing in Marco Island. I'm going between my fly rod and a couple other spinning rods. The stand you see is something I custom built for my kayak. It fits it perfectly. It's made out of PVC pipe as well as these two metal rings to hold the paddle and a little stripping basket for, well, specifically fly fishing. This is just an easy way to switch between the pole and your paddle while you're standing. I always had trouble where I would see a fish with the paddle in my hands, go down and pick up the pole, come up, scare the fish. So it's a lot less work to kind of just do it this way. As you can see, I was able to put the fly rod down and keep it out of the way. For $45 and just kind of a little customization for my kayak specifically, I mean, hey, you can't really beat it. And if you like to stand, it definitely comes in handy. The fly I'm using is called the Tantalizer. It's something I came up with a while ago. I go back and forth between either the Tantalizer or the Jones Tantalizer. But it's made out of craft fur with um, spun hackle around the rest of the shank kind of imitates bait fish sometimes other times it's more of just a shrimp looking pattern don't really know but I have pretty much caught all my fish in fresh and salt water on this particular fly and obviously it was working here today 20 pound test is all I was using and it held up against everything I caught that day the weather in the beginning of the morning was foggy and overcast like that picture showed it stayed that way for most of the day and the wind stayed relatively calm coming out of the north so it made for easier ability to stand a lot more and actually sit in this area where a lot of the fish were as you can tell there's something busting right up in front of me now the stripping basket that I created was meant to prevent knots in the fly line but um, the older fly line you have the more the knots are going to come up. Unfortunately, it's just something that happens. When it works correctly though, the basket is meant to capture all of your excess line and then it's supposed to allow it to go out seemingly very simple. So if you happen to hook into a bigger fish and it decides to run, you don't have to worry about you know you standing on it or it catching anything else. It's just kind of supposed to make it easier. And for the most part it usually does. For anyone who doesn't know, the ladyfish is the cousin of the tarpon. They're not as big as the tarpon get, obviously, but they do get pretty decent sized, and they put up a good fight. Uh, I mean, some people just get tired of catching them, but if nothing else is biting, I'm not really complaining. They jump a lot, they pull a lot, and if you get a real good one, it'll actually give you a run for your money. I always do my best to keep a rag like in my pocket or handy because when you catch fish like this it just ends up getting slime all over the place and a rag is very very helpful. That was on fluke. Yep. Yeah, it's got to be the smaller bait. In this case, I'm using my extra light rod, which is 4 foot 6 inches, and a fluke on the end. Oh my 
Shoot, yeah it is. There we go. Thank you, darling. I saw that one jump out of the water. Oh, that wasn't on you. This was a different day with the same location. I was using a little paddle tail bait fish. Here it looks like a red jig head with my clear translucent body. And different ways to fish this. You can just cast them out, bounce them off the bottom, or you can simply just troll them behind you. And I actually catch a lot of fish trolling. Well, those are just a couple more baits that you can use to catch ladyfish they also work well for a lot of different species anyways thanks for watching last cast adventures and feel free to subscribe